I myself am a product of studying abroad, and I would not be here if I had not studied abroad myself. I became the person that I am right now. I'm doing the things I'm doing right now just because I had this experience abroad. A little bit about my background. I come from a very international family. My parents worked and studied abroad, and they met each other in Hong Kong. My father was working in Asia. My mother was in school in Hong Kong. Then she studied abroad in Australia to finish school over there. And what happened is they married, moved to Australia, and lived there happily after. That's what they thought. But they went to the Netherlands, back home to my father's family, and they decided the Netherlands is a great place to raise a family. So that's when I came about. I was born in the Netherlands. I grew up in the north of the country, in Drenthe, and that's where I thought I had a very regular Dutch life. However, I went to school in Groningen, which is a great place to study, um, and I had a regular student life, I thought, but I, I wanted more. So I moved to the United States and went to graduate school over there. Actually, I went to Texas, of all places. <laughs> Texas is big. Everything is big in Texas, and I really loved being there. Um, the University of Texas is very international. I met Mary, many students over there, both Americans and international students. And um, there I also found my own identity. I found out that I was really Dutch in their eyes. You know, perceiving myself as a Dutch slash Asian student from the Netherlands, there I was totally Dutch. And I got many, many questions about my background. Like, what is this policy in the Netherlands about euthanasia? What about um, gay rights? What about... Um, soft drugs, um, about selling those and, and using them. And, and I felt like I had to defend a lot of things that I was not even aware of myself, being from a society where things were like the norm, right? So I felt I had to explain a lot of things, but that made me very much aware of my identity, my norms. And I got a lot of personal questions, a lot of sometimes offending questions, but it made me realize that I had to really uh, formulate my opinions in a very clear way, which I enjoyed. I made many, many friends in Texas. I went to rodeos, like you can see on this picture. Um, I made cowboy friends. Um, I had friends who were Republicans, who had um, guns in the back of their pickup truck. I had friends who were very liberal and they were street musicians in Austin. It was a blast. I learned a lot, but at the same time, I felt I had to move on and get another foreign experience. So I moved to Asia. And I had this chance to do an internship for four months while I was actually still a graduate student in Texas. So I moved to Korea. I had never been to Asia before, even though my mom was from China. But there I had to reinvent myself again. I was thinking, okay, I'm Dutch. I just happened to study in the US. But when I came to Korea, people didn't see me as Dutch. They saw me as a single, unmarried woman, 26 years old, needing a husband, because they felt they needed to take care of me. It was a totally different society than I was used to in the Netherlands and the US, and um, it confronted me also with my Asian background. You know, I, had, I have some mild Asian looks, that's what I thought, and, but that was a confusing thing at the same time, because people were looking at me and saying, wow, those freckles, and people were touching my skin on the streets. I went to a bathhouse and, and met many wonderful Korean women, and they were jealous of my fair skin. And I was very embarrassed always that I was never getting a tan, but they said, I love your skin. It's so white. <laughs> wow, these were really interesting things. Another thing was that I was living with a Korean family. They spoke no English. I was interning at the city hall in Korea, in Taejeon, where no one spoke English. Only my boss had a few words. What I found out is that I was kind of low on the food chain. It was like I was at the end of a long, long desk of workers. My boss was all the way on the top of the desk, and he was getting the big privileges, like sitting in a big armchair and having a nap after lunch while everyone else was working. And I learned the hard way that I had to behave. I was the only woman in the office, um, but I gained my position there, respect. Um, I had to go drink with the guys afterwards, and I did. It was a lot of fun. I did karaoke, and um, at the end, I felt I gained a position and respect because I was asked to teach English as a second language 
to my boss and to my 50 co-workers there. So that's what I did after work and I felt I had a new identity again. Even though I was a foreign student, I felt I was now in a position that I could be a teacher to my um, hosts. And that was a wonderful experience on itself. After graduating in the United States, I had to make a big decision. And that decision was, am I going to stay um, in the US or am I going back home to the Netherlands and pick up where I left it? Um, I had a degree in law, I had a degree in public administration, but at the same time, I had the other choice of following the true love of my life, who happened to be Yemen, Yemeni, and he um, was working for the State Department as an Arabic language teacher in Tunisia. So here I was, go back home with all my wonderful experiences and follow a career that was matching my study background. But I didn't. I followed my heart and I married um, my Yemeni love. And we um, kind of put together this, this wonderful international family and uh, I got that very interesting experience being first in Tunisia and then uh, uh, visiting Yemen as well. This is my oldest son in my arms and uh, I had the niqab and he had, I had all the experiences that you could have in Yemen. After two years in Tunisia, I decided to go back to the Netherlands with my husband and um, we're now happily living here and raising our three kids in three different languages at home. They're all destined to go abroad, for sure, at least for a year. You know, it's not a question of do you want to go? No, they have to go. It's part of their upbringing. <laughs> living abroad means also loving abroad. That's what I really learned from studying in a different country. You get to love the culture, the new language, the food, the smells, um, and if you're lucky, you also find the true love. There was a recent study done um, on the Erasmus Exchange Program where um, it was shown that about a quarter of the students who went abroad met their true love, or at least a long-lasting partner. And about a million babies were born out of those different relationships. Um, so I think that's a, that's a power, very powerful tool. So if you go back to studying abroad, um, studying abroad is not really about studying, I think. Studying abroad is about being abroad. It's about experiential learning. And I want to put that question to you. Like, what did you get out of your stay in, in a different country? Did you challenge yourself enough? Did you get away from the books? I know academia is great, building up knowledge is wonderful, but what it's really about is getting experiences. Getting experiences and dive into new adventures, that's what I advise you to do. Secondly, make new friends. Make friends that don't look like you, who are different, who have a different opinion about life, who come from a different background. Number three, follow your heart. Even in academia, there are so many choices to make, but you know what's right for you. There are so many opportunities and it's all about diving into life and shaping yourself as a person. You don't know who you are going to be in a few years. This is something you need to explore. There is no big plan. You just have to follow adventure, follow life, and uh, develop the skills that you need to have to go through life in the best way possible. Now I'm a consultant, um, I'm an educational consultant, and I work with a lot of young people who are dreaming of going to the United States, and we help them with college placements. I often hold a mirror and say, what do you want to get out of this experience? They always say, oh, I want to go to Harvard, I want to go to Yale. I said, I know, but why do you want to go away? You know, what do you hope to get out of that? It's not about your major field of study, it's not about what school you go to, it's about what you learn on the way. The challenges are there, you have to pick them up. So 30 years ago, I was one of the few students who went abroad for a full degree and um, I felt I was um, going the hard way, you know. I had to take out my typewriter, I had to write application papers and um, it was not an easy thing to do. I could have just studied in Groningen, stay in the Netherlands, and then just go on to a job here in the Netherlands. But somehow I chose to do it the hard way. Looking at the circle that I went through, it looks like it was all planned, but it wasn't. It was all chances that I saw, opportunities that I saw, and um, that made me a better person, I think, and living life to the fullest. 
30 years ago, it was more for the younger uh, kids who were from military families or diplomats that had a chance to study abroad. Nowadays, it's different. Everyone has a chance to study abroad. Every university has an exchange program, has partners abroad. So it's kind of easy to get uncomfortable in a different country through a comfortable um, way. You know, your school can arrange everything you want. But now what it takes is guts. You need to have guts to do it, just to do it. It's not about packing the right stuff for your trip abroad. It's about having the right mindset. It's about going out there and meeting new friends, meeting life, basically. So what I call upon is, is just having all international women and men encourage the younger generation to take a chance and find their destiny. Throw away the books. Everyone can be smart and study and find their way to a better degree in a nicer environment. It's really about developing your character. No guts, no glory, that's what I say. And I hope that we can all look for younger people, but even look at yourself and say, hey, can I get something more out of my career, out of my life, and explore? So I hope that everyone will study abroad one day, one time, and that you will help encourage these people. Thank you so much. <laughs>